from mahabharata and uh, this is a story when uh, dronacharya the guru for both uh, gauravas and pandavas so he called all his disciples uh, to a river bank and he wanted to check whether uh, the all his disciples have learned the art of uh, archery uh, very uh, very good so then he called all of them to the river bank and then uh, in the river bank there was a tree so on the tree he planted a, a bird pigeon made of clay and then the target he gave to all of his students was to hit the bird in a single arrow and then whoever is uh, hitting the uh, bird in the single arrow he will be the winner of that particular contest then he called the all the his disciples one by one first came uh, duryodhana then when duryodhana came acharya asked him like what are you seeing then duryodhana, okay i am seeing the bird then duryodhana asked him what else are you seeing then duryodhana told okay i am seeing the tree behind the uh, on which the bird is placed then again i asked him what else you are seeing then he told okay i am seeing the river which is flowing uh, behind the tree what else you are seeing i am seeing the mountain beautiful mountain which is behind the river and so on and then dronachar told him that okay now uh, you are not uh, fit for uh, even taking for taking part in this contest so maybe you can quit so like this uh, one by one all the gauravas and pandavas uh, came and then they were uh, the Guru Drona Chere was asking him a similar question, and then he was not satisfied. Given by his disciples, and then he asked them to quit one by one. So last chance of Arjuna. Then again, when Arjuna came, Drona Chere asked the same question: "What are you seeing?" Then Arjuna told that I am seeing the bird. Then again, Drona Chere asked him, "What else are you seeing?" Then Arjuna told, "I am seeing the eye of the bird." Then again, Drona Chere asked him, "What else are you seeing?" Then he told him, "Yes, I have seen the eyeball of the bird." Then Drona Chere just checked how he was uh, holding the bow, how he was taking the aim, whether he was uh, taking care of the breeze that was flowing through that uh, particular uh, place, uh, whether he was uh, while taking the aim, whether he was taking care of that particular factor, and then he was found that everything is okay, and his material for the bow was okay, his arrows, everything was okay. Then he told, "Okay, now you can just go ahead and then shoot." Then Arjuna shot the arrow, and then it really went and bang on the eyeball of the kid. So the moral of the story is that five thousand years back, or a lot, many thousand years back, our ancestors were knowing what is actually the success of truth. We call it as a process approach, right? So the fundamental principle on which Six Sigma methodology is built is a process approach. So that means when Drona Charya was asking the people to take the aim, he was just checking whether their inputs were correct, right? Whether their bows, arrows, and whether all the materials, whatever they are, they were having, whether there was good enough. Then he was saying whether the process they are following is uh, good enough, whether they are hold, they are holding the arrow correctly, whether they are holding the bow correctly, whether they are taking the aim correctly, how they are focused, right? Are they uh, very focused in getting the required results and all? and then once he was satisfied uh, he was not satisfied with the inputs and the processes what were being followed by the all the other disciples but when arjuna came then we found that his input was right his process he was very focused to get the result and then he gave the clearance for him to go ahead and shoot the arrow. he went ahead shot the arrow and then we were able to achieve the target right so in most of the uh, our uh, daily life we always find that uh, we are always uh, bothered puts right we always uh, find that we are under pressure from our higher ups that the productivity has gone low the defect has gone up and the turnaround time has been uh, violated and then the customer is yelling at because of some customer issues and then so many out- uh, issues related to the output so this is eating away a lot of our time right and then we don't even have time to really check whether our inputs are right and our processes are right and then we are just stuck up every every day day in and day out fire fighting and trying to solve the problem but the basic philosophy of six sigma says control the inputs then the output will automatically be consistent and defect free so that means how we have seen in examples of dronacharya arjun he controlled the inputs 
and uh, he controlled the process. So the guru was kind of uh, very 200% confident that his disciple will really achieve the target and that really happened, right? So the basic philosophy of Six Sigma, if I want to reiterate, control the inputs, control the process, put will automatically be consistent and defect free, right? So for example, if you see the figure here, you can see the raw meat, you can see the grill, and then if you are able to control the quality of the input, that is the meat, you are able to control the process conditions, the grill temperature, the grill, uh, the holding time at the grill, then uh, day after day, week after week, month after month, you will always get a consistently good and tasty burger, right? So basically, Six Sigma says, is a fundamental principle is the process approach, which says control the inputs, control the process, then output will automatically be consistent. Okay. The other important aspect of Six Sigma is the reduction in variability. You know that variability in any process is inevitable, right? Do you have you seen any process which does not have any variation? So whether it is a manufacturing process or whether it is a so, uh, software development process, or whether it is an IT service related process, whether it's a construction process, or even whether it is a natural process, we always see there is a lot of variability in the process, right? So this variability sometimes is too high that it is not uh, uh, acceptable to the customer, and then we start producing defectives, right? So then once we start producing the defectives, then again, it is not good for the management because we are going to lose money, right? So the Six Sigma methodology, will help in reducing the defect by reducing the variation in the process to near zero levels, right? So how Six Sigma helps to reduce the variations in the output? Again, as by reducing the variations in the inputs and the process, right? So Six Sigma methodology helps you to identify why the variations are caused because of the inputs, why the variations are caused because of the process condition, and then we are able to identify the root causes, then take some actions to reduce those uh, uh, variations in the input and process so that the output will automatically be uh, very consistent, right? So for example, you see this is a Six Sigma project which was done to reduce the rejections in a particular process. So if you can see on the left-hand side, the total, uh, the av average rejection was somewhere around 21%, and you can see that the variation was very high, right? So the minimum was around 10%, and the maximum was somewhere around 32%. Right, And then after uh, doing a Six Sigma pro project on that, and then identifying the root causes for the variation, and then taking some actions to reduce those variations in the inputs and processes, we find that the overall, the rejections has gone down drastically from an average of around 21% to roughly around 8%, right? And you can also see there is a huge reduction in the variations also. So typically, whenever you do a Six Sigma process, you find that there is a significant improvement in the metric we want to improve, be it uh, productivity or uh, uh, re rejections or turnaround time. Whatever the metric you want to improve, there will be a drastic improvement in the metric and then there will be a drastic reduction in the variability in the process. So now coming to what is Six Sigma. So Six Sigma is a data-driven statistical methodology that can be used to improve the quality and performance of the service product or service to the highest level by reducing variability in the process. So Six Sigma, there are two features of Six Sigma methodology. First thing is it is a data-driven approach. And second thing is it is a statistical, it uses a lot of statistical tools. So if you, whenever you want to do a Six Sigma project, you collect a lot of data, a lot of accurate data, and then you put this data into these complex statistical tools in order to validate the root causes. And once you are able to identify the root causes with respect to the inputs and the process conditions, then you will be able to take uh, improvement actions on those, focusing only on those critical root causes. And then once you are able to uh, take action on those critical root causes, then you'll be able to make an improvement and then you'll be able to reduce the variability in the process. So the unique feature of Six Sigma is the, it is a data-based approach and it is a statistic-based approach. So when a process is run, level of quality, then we find that the number of defects is very low at around 3.4 defects per million opportunities. So you consider that an aircraft taking off is a process. Right? So when an aircraft is uh, taking off, 
in the world, maybe you assume that in a week, around 1 million uh, um, takeoffs are happening. So if 1 million takeoffs are happening around the world in the whole week or the whole month, then only three takeoffs are going to be very defective. So you can find that such a low defect level, then there are a lot of advantages to that, right? Then, then when you talk, talk about Six Sigma, uh, when they, it was invented in Motorola in the year 1987, so it was not a new invention. No new uh, invention concepts or uh, tools were developed as a part of Six Sigma methodology. It was only the consolidation of the existing tools and it, it was only, so these marks ups are coming because of some participants. I don't know from where it's coming. Sorry, sorry to hear that, but it's not from our fault. So Six Sigma methodology, when it was introduced in uh, um, Motorola, it was not uh, uh, any new invention. It was only the consolidation of the existing tools and concepts, right? So whatever the tools and concepts which were existing uh, over the last 50 years or 100 years, so that were packaged into a Six Sigma methodology. Say, for example, the tools like uh, control charts has been in existence for the last more than 100 years, right? and uh, design of experiment, hypothesis testing. So these statistical tests were also being used in use for so long time. So like how, uh, when, whenever uh, you have a problem in your house, say for example, you have a problem of uh, electrical problem at your house, right? Your uh, fan is not running. So you call an electrician. So does he come empty handed? No, he comes with a kit box, right? So in the kit box, he is having some tools with the help of which you'll be able to identify what is the problem. And then he'll be having again some tools with the tools, he'll be able to solve the problem, right? So like how an uh, electrician or a, or a plumber is having a tools box, as a process person, you are going to be exposed to a lot of uh, statistical and other uh, uh, problem solving tools uh, as a part of the Six Sigma methodology, so that you'll be able to solve your process problems, you'll be able to analyze and solve the process problems. So Six Sigma is actually a, a tools box having a sophisticated tools for problem solving. And then the major drivers of Six Sigma is it helps in increasing the customer satisfaction and to the profits to a great extent. So that means it is uh, it is, listens to the voice of business. That is, the you will be getting more profits or the cost saving and it listens to the voice of customers. So the customer satisfaction also will improve whenever you do a Six Sigma project. So then we, I have told that Six Sigma methodology is a data-based and statistical driven structured approach. So what is a structured approach? Yes, we follow a structured approach in the problem solving. We call it as a DMIC methodology. So that means we, whenever we have a problem, we just solve it through this methodology, DMIC methodology, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So in the different phase, we listen to the voice of customer and then try to understand what are their pain points whether quality is a problem or on-time delivery is a problem or turnaround time is a problem or getting is a problem. So once we identify the, listen to the voice of customer and identify the pain, then we try to relate it to a metric for improvement. We identify a metric for improvement. For improvement can be productivity or on-time delivery or turnaround time, et cetera. And then once you have identified the metric, we try to quantify the problem. So we may write, frame a problem statement saying that the on-time delivery uh, to the customer is very low at say 85%. And then we can define the goal of the project to be to increase the on-time delivery percentage from 85% to 95%. And then we can just decide on the scope of the project saying that, okay, this particular project is going to focus only on this particular product line, whatever is being product line and this particular location, right? And then once you are defined, then we will write a business case, why we are taking up the project, what are the benefits you are going to get? Who is going to be the project manager? Who is going to be the project team? And we will also get it uh, formally uh, uh, approved by the management. So this is what happens during the different phase. So during the measure phase, we collect a lot of accurate data. And then we just try to do a measurement system analysis to ensure that all the measurements are right. Then we uh, do the baseline uh, sigma level calculation to really see where we are before solving the problem. So what is the sigma level or what is the process uh, efficiency uh, before the project is done. And then during the analyst phase, again, we just, whatever the collector data we have collected during the uh, measure phase, we just uh, put those data in the statistical tools like hypothesis testing, 
and all those uh, statistical tools. And then we try to identify what are the critical root causes which is contributing to the major problem. And then these root causes are getting, getting validated using the uh, statistical tools. So during the improve phase, then we just uh, focus on improving only those root causes which, has, which are very critical. So maybe we have started with some 40 or 50 different uh, potential causes which are creating the problem. But ultimately, during the analysis phase, we just see only some three or four root causes are contributing to the major uh, problem. And then during the improve phase, we focus only on improving these three or four root causes. So during the control phase, then we, whatever the improvements we have done, we will try to sustain this improvement by uh, closing control, uh, controlling the inputs and the process condition to a very narrow range so that we will be able to control the output also to, uh, within a very, very consistent range. So this is what, uh, how uh, Six Sigma project is done through the, through the DMIC methodology. Then when we talk about the Six Sigma roles and responsibilities, so the roles which are available, so like uh, we have the white belts, yellow belts, green belts, black belts, master black belts and champions. So this is also a structured way of approach. So white belt are the people who are uh, some slight exposure to the Six Sigma methodology and tools. So they have a basic awareness about the Six Sigma. And the yellow belts are normally the people who are trained to be the team members in a Six Sigma project. So they are exposed to the overview of Six Sigma, then in the defined measure and maybe the control phase. So they will, uh, they don't do any independent projects on their own. So they will assist the project leader, either a a black belt project leader in uh, data collection and uh, during the uh, control phase they will also ensure that the improvement actions are being implemented properly and then input uh, and uh, process uh, parameters have been identified as critical root causes so these are being uh, uh, closely monitored and controlled so that we are able to get a consistent output so the role of a uh, uh, belt is more on data collection during the measure phase and uh, controlling the process during the control phase then the green belts are normally exposed to, uh, uh, to all the statistical tools during the analyze phase and improve phase. So they, are, they will be able to lead some independent projects on their own. So maybe they may be able to do a simple project in their own department uh, and uh, they will be again taking the help of the yellow belts. And then they, they also can um, uh, help the black belts in their project. So either they can do a in the small independent project in their own department, or they can help a black belt as a team member in a black belt project, right? So the black belts, again, they are actually exposed to the complex tools and uh, techniques, statistical tools in the Six Sigma methodology. And they, these are the people who are normally from the uh, middle management managers or senior managers. So they would try to solve some complex problems and then where we need to in uh, like coordinate or we need to solve the problems which are distributed across functions, right? So you need to lead their cross-functional team. So that is the reason the leadership quality is very important for your black belt project. So you should have a good leadership quality so that you should be able to lead a team of uh, people from a cross-functional uh, function. And then you should be able to have the, uh, you should be able to absorb the complex statistical tools and techniques, right? So he'll be leading, uh, a team containing the green belts and the yellow belts, and then he'll be closely coordinating with the, like, getting the guidance from the master black belt, and then he'll be like uh, independently leading a project, okay? And the role of a master black belt is more of a technical in nature to a, a organization which is uh, starting the Six Sigma initiative. They may be the consultants which are, who are hired from outside, or they may be the uh, persons who are leading the quality management or quality improvement initiatives in any company. So they normally uh, act as the master black belt. So their main role is to coordinate the Six Sigma project. So they will help the champions who are the, again, the about the role of the champion, I'll be talking to that new. So they'll be helping the champion in identifying the Six Sigma project. And then uh, the Six Sigma uh, leaders, project leaders. And then uh, whenever the projects are taken up, then they will guide the project leaders about what type of uh, approach you should uh, take in the problem solving and uh, what type of tools and techniques should be used during the analyze and improve phase, right? So they are uh, actually, they will give the technical guidance to the project leaders and uh, they will also coordinate with the senior management in terms of reviews. So they will uh, help the uh, project leaders in uh, making the presentations and so that uh, some important and useful decisions can be taken during the review meetings. 
then the role of a champion is again very important so a champion is normally uh, um, a person from a senior management maybe a general manager or vice president level so his main role is providing the administrative support to the six sigma project so whenever a six sigma project is taken maybe the project may face a roadblock in terms of getting the right uh, inputs or materials right uh, human resources right machine time so whenever such problems are being uh, um, faced by the project leaders then they can take it up to their champions so the champions the main role is to provide the administrative support so that the projects can be completed successfully so these are the uh, different roles in a six sigma project right so with this i am just concluding the basic uh, uh, overview about the six sigma so to summarize six sigma the basic fundamental principle is the process approach which says that control the inputs control the process then the output will automatically be con controlled then second thing is the in six sigma we are trying to reduce the variability in the process and by reducing the variability in the inputs and outputs we will be able to reduce the variability in the output process so that we will be able to get a consistent and defect free output right and then we also talked about the whenever a process is running in a six sigma methodology uh, level then the defects is only 3.4 defects mainly in opportunities and then we are uh, it is a data based and approach where we are using a lot of statistical tools for uh, problem solving and then we also learned about the dimec methodology the define measure analyze improve and control and then we also talked about the different roles in a six sigma methodology so with this i will just move to the case study so again the problem what i presented in my first slide about my daughter so feeling sad because uh, she was unable to spend her uh, vacation in a exotic place and then the root cause of the problem was that i was unable to take her to that uh, vacation because i didn't have money why i didn't have the money because for the last 5 years i was unable to save the money even though i was earning quite a lot so now let us see how this particular problem can be solved using a six sigma methodology so during the defined phase so first we will have to identify who is the customer so here the my customer is my daughter so the voice of customer again the voice of customer says that she is feeling sad because she was unable to explain to her uh, uh, to narrator uh, uh, stories to her uh, uh, classmates right about the vacation so that was the voice of customer and then whenever we wanted to convert that voice of customer into a measurable metric all this was caused because of the lack of money so lack of money the main problem was saving so the metric which was identified for improvement was savings so then problem statement when i frame the problem statement then the savings from a salary is 0% against a target saving of 5% for the last 5 years so from here you can see that the problem statement we are able to identify the metric for improvement that is the savings and then we also we are able to identify for how long the that means for the last 5 years right and then to increase the savings from 0% to 5% of a salary within 3 months so the goal statement will clearly tell you like what do you want to do and how do you want to what do you want to achieve and when do you want to achieve right so to increase the savings from 0% to 5% over within 3 months then what is the expected annual savings so my salary was around 120000 so 5% of that will be 6 6000 so that is the expected saving and then the project timeline is 3 months so this is what is the defined in the defined phase so during the measure phase so you just collect the data so what i did was i just collected the data on how i was spending this 120000 so what are the different categories so i just categorized that i like what are the amount money i was spending on rent food shopping local travel loan repayment etc etc and then i was trying to uh, uh, draw a pareto chart right and then i was able to find that the rent food and shopping and uh, local travel so these four were contributing to the major around 75% of the expenses were being contributed by these four category and then i was thinking that rent we are and we will not be able to do much because uh, that was the place where it was convenient to both me my wife and my kids so that was the one of the least uh, rent uh, possible in that particular area and we didn't want to shift that uh, area because already we have settled but again food we found that that was actually we were uh, we ourselves were surprised that we were spending so much of money on food right so the, that was the area we thought that there is a lot of opportunity for improvement then we decided that we will focus on the only reducing the expenses on food 
then again we collected the data on the month wise uh, how we have spent the uh, money right so again we found that uh, uh, if you take only the food expenses then again we wanted to see how the variation was there so we collected the data for one year from january to december and then we found that the minimum was around 1650 dollars during february and the maximum was around 3750 dollars during december and you can see that there there is a lot of variation then we thought that it is actually an ideal problem that can be solved through a six sigma methodology then we started off with identifying the potential root causes for the high expenses on food so then again on the fishbone diagram then we placed the high food expense as the effect and then we try to identify what are the defect what are the different problem so one is on the primary food like rice wheat bread then on the secondary uh, uh, food items like oil meat pulses vegetables etc then the snacks and beverages like milk coffee and snack and then the outside food like ice cream chocolate restaurant etc so we were able to identify okay these are the potential reasons or this is a list of the uh, possible reasons for the high food expenses then we used uh, another tool called cost and effect matrix which is again normally you learn it as a part of the six sigma methodology so we try to identify uh, what are the major uh, out of these causes what have been listed so what is the major cause so for that again we did this cost and effect analysis so we identified cost and the health problems as the two major output variables because we whenever we wanted to reduce the food expenses we didn't want to achieve the reduction in food expenses at the cost of health problems because we don't want to learn health problems just by reducing the cost on food because normally what happens is whenever you want to reduce the food expenses then you just uh, stop buying some nutritious food or something like that so that your health is going to also going to be affected so we didn't want to happen uh, that to happen so we wanted to find some solution so that the food expenses also is reduced at the same time the health problems also reduce right so we have identified these two as the critical output variables and then we listed all the input variables and then try to find out what is the impact of every input variable on the output variable and then uh, we were able to prioritize we were able to find that the meat restaurants oils ice creams and chocolate so these were the four uh, root main uh, critical root causes contributing to the higher uh, expenses in the uh, food then we thought we will just focus only on um, reduce expenses only on these two uh, in these four uh, categories so the during the improve phase we took these actions so we reduced the consumption of meat from twice a week to once in a week so till then during the both the weekends and we are having the meat and down then we decided that we will have it only on one day then sunday then reduce the consumption of oil from 4 liters per month to 2 liters per month then reduce the number of visits to restaurants from once in a week to twice once in two weeks so we just cut short the number of visits to the restaurant then we reduce the consumption of ice creams and chocolates so once we are able to take these four actions then all these actions resulted in an annual cost saving of around 6000 dollars and then we also found that the health expenses also reduced from 5500 dollars to 2000 dollars so this happened mainly because if you see all these four uh, uh, actions whatever we have taken were actually also contributing to the health expenses right because we were just oil we are consuming more oil we were having frequently this uh, restaurant uh, outside food and then we were spending on ice creams and chocolate and we, when we were able to reduce this expenses then we found that the health expenses also came up so this is the beauty of six sigma methodology so whenever you are doing a six sigma project and then if you are doing the six sigma project in the right way collecting the right type of data and then using the appropriate tool we found that the primary metric whatever you are want to improve that also will improve and the secondary metric so secondary metric is actually a metric which is going to be negatively impacted because of taking some improvement actions to improve the primary metric so for example in your uh, shop floor in your production floor you just go and tell your people that i want to improve the productivity then immediately their reaction will be that is i can do i can improve my productivity i can make it faster but then a lot of defect is going to be produced so are you going to are you willing to accept uh, increase in the defect same way you want ask them to reduce the defects then immediately say okay then i will just uh, make the uh, this thing, i will just uh, uh, do the work slowly so that your defects will be reduced but again the productivity will go down so are you willing to accept that so in the minds of people always it happened that okay if you want to increase the productivity then the quality will be affected and vice versa when i want to improve the quality productivity will be affected but once you do a six sigma project and you are able to do it in the right way 
both productivity and quality both will improve so i have a lot of experience in uh, this type of uh, six sigma projects where both the primary metric and secondary metric will be used so you can see this is the result of the project so previously we were uh, before the project we were uh, having an average expenses of around 2500 dollars uh, for the food expenses which reduced to around 2000 dollars so you can see that the, there was a significant reduction uh, and you can also see the variability also has come down you can see from the before and after the variation has come down and there was a significant improvement and then the current status maybe after 10 15 years is that my annual savings has increased to 10% of my salary for the last 5 years my expenses on health and loan repayments have come down drastically why loan repayments because now that i am able to save more money then that means i am just uh, able to whatever the loan repayments are there i am able to dispose it of i am able to pay more towards my loan repayment so that that also has come down drastically so these are the two tangible benefits what i can see the tangible means what i can measure in terms of dollar term that means savings has increased by 10% and my health and the loan repayment uh, has also come down and then the intangible benefits are uh, the that i am able to uh, enjoy a very exotic uh, location with my family and most important of all that all i am able to see the smile happiness in my daughter's face uh, during this vacation for which i can never fix a monetary value so these are all some of the intangible benefits and i think when i started the presentation i told you that uh, i wanted to really explore whether six sigma methodology will be able to help me in solving this particular uh, person and now i think i have given you the answer yes definitely using the six sigma methodology you will not be you will be able to solve not only your professional uh, office or work related problem but also the personal related problem provided if your approach is right and you are able to collect uh, accurate uh, data so with this i move to the third uh, section that is why six sigma certification why people should get certified as a six sigma so the first one is a job opportunity in reputed companies right so i will just give my own uh, personal experience so i was uh, graduated i graduated from uh, iit varanasi in the year 1985 and for uh, 22 years i was working in production in uh, in a manufacturing company out of this 22 years in production in uh, in a manufacturing company first 17 years was in production and then after 17 years and then i met with an accident and then my mobility was restricted then i was shifted from production to quality team right so then that uh, that particular uh, manufacturing unit again the product what we were making was also a very unique product there were only four companies in india manufacturing those components it was highly technical in nature and then i have uh, worked for two companies and then I, for the other two companies i had attended the interviews and then for some reason i didn't take up the job so when i was shifted to quality then i felt that that was the lowest point in my career and then i was feeling that uh, my career is in a, uh, this thing where i was feeling highly insecure luckily at that point of time i was exposed to six sigma that was in the year 2004 i was uh, trained in black, six sigma methodology as a black belt and then i did uh, two projects on my own and then i started coordinating the, uh, the black belt project six sigma project in the role of a master black belt for five years and then once i, I like improved my skills in the six sigma methodology then i got shifted to a its company in chennai and then uh, with the double the salary and then i was able to totally shift to entirely new field because for 22 years i was working for uh, a manufacturing company and then i was able to shift to a, a service related company only with a twice the salary only because of the six sigma methodology then i worked in that company for 7 uh, years and then uh, for the last 5 years i am working as a successful six sigma consultant and then now i am consulting for companies like amazon you know they are the e-commerce giants and then i have consulted for uh, rocket they are the world india's uh, largest starch manufacturer with the capacity for around 10000 tons of capacity in four different places and they are the last fourth largest manufacturers in the world then i have also consulted for a building services company in women and a hr recruitment company in chennai so you can see there's a wide variety of companies and then like uh, like varying from uh, e-commerce to uh, starts manufacturing to building services so across the different so you you find that the bigger companies right so otherwise uh, i don't think i would have even imagine 5 years back that i'd be working for amazon right so with the, my educational background uh, and the uh, experience whatever i was having i would never have dreamt about working for amazon but that is the reality now and that was mainly because of my six sigma methodology 
so job opportunity to reputed companies because you know that in reputed company they run this continuous improvement program whether it is tcs or infosys or cognizant and if you are having the right skills definitely a lot of opportunities are there in these companies then again in your career advancement so whenever you are practicing this six sigma methodology and then you are having the right skills then definitely you are going to have a competitive edge over your peers right so if for 10 people are going to compete for a, the next promotion then you will be the leader because you are equipped with the problem solving technique which is very important for uh, advancing in your career right so it is one of the very important uh, certification for your career advancement and then once you are able to you have the right skills and you are in the right company then i think the salary is not going to be a problem and then whenever you shift from one company to another company definitely you will keep on uh, earning more money right so more money you will be able to earn and then the most important thing as i was explaining from my own uh, uh, personal experience is that it is applicable across industries so be it the electronic industry manufacturing industry be it the automotive component manufacturing industry be it a construction industry be it a IT service related company, be it a support service company, company, be it a software development company, whether it is a pharmaceutical company, whether it is a restaurant, whether it is a hospital, anything, you name anything, because everything is process, right? Everything is a process. And then through the Six Sigma methodology, you are trying to improve the process and reduce the difference. So this is applicable across the different verticals. And then you'll be able to make a career change from one vertical to another vertical, right? So this is actually a very important vehicle through which you will be able to navigate very easily across the different fields. And then the, normally there is always a doubt in the minds of many people like, I am working only as a quality executive, I am working in the production, so can I take the, how the Six Sigma methodology or the certification will work? I am working in HR, I am not in production or quality, so I am in HR, I am in uh, supply chain, I am working for a pharmaceutical company, I am working in a software company, how, so how Six Sigma is uh, applicable to me? So for all this, the answer is yes. So in whatever the level you are, in whatever the functions you are working, in whatever vertical you are working, everywhere Six Sigma is uh, applicable. Right? So Six Sigma is a universal methodology. It can be applicable to any type of process, any type of vertical it is applicable, and then the scope is going to be wide. So I, I, I know that for most of the people, be, be it uh, very people at the entry level, at the entry level we always have a doubt, whether uh, what type of job I am going to, I should choose, like which line I should, which vertical I should choose. So a lot of confusion going on. Then whether you are in the lower management and middle management, you are always feeling insecure because you feel that your skills are very like uh, very narrow field. You are having a limited uh, exposure. So with that limited exposure, if, uh, if there is going to be a problem in the current job, then what is going to happen to you? So this insecurity is going to be there throughout your uh, this thing. But once you uh, learn and you have the acquired the skills uh, uh, of a Six Sigma methodology, then you feel that the entire world is open to you, right? In terms of uh, verticals, in terms of location, in terms of the job function. So everything is opened up and then you can feel that you can fly like a free bird in the world. So now I will just cover the last uh, uh, the part of the presentation that is why I skip. So we have been uh, giving the services for the Six Sigma training we just give the yellow belt, uh, black belt, green belt, and the black belt training. So why are the, what are the unique features uh, of uh, what uh, ice cube can offer? So the first thing is uh, I am a trainer with uh, more than 30 years of experience in manufacturing and IT services. As I told you, I have spent uh, around 22 years of my experience in manufacturing, and I have around eight years of experience in And then when I was working uh, for both these uh, companies, I have been involved in the software development like the ERP development and the workflow management tools. So I got exposed to the software development uh, processes also. And for the last five years, I am working as a consultant. So I have consulted in the various uh, verticals, like as I told you, like e-commerce, then uh, uh, services, then manufacturing, then uh, building services. So, so many different verticals I have. So I have not only the theoretical knowledge, but I also have a practical knowledge of how the Six Sigma tools and uh, methodology can be uh, used for uh, improving the processes and to get the benefits. That I was certified as a black belt in the year 2004, so almost 16 years back. And uh, I was certified as a master black belt in the year 2013 from ISI, that is the Indian Statistical Institute Chennai, which is the, one of the most reputed uh, uh, institute for offering the master black belt uh, 
certification. Then I have hands-on experience in the Six Sigma implementation for the last 16 years when I was working uh, in the company. So I was uh, driving these uh, Six Sigma initiatives whenever I was working for the manufacturing and IT company. And then after that, I have been just uh, involved in the, uh, for the Amazon, maybe the, for the last three years, I'm just uh, doing the consultation. Then again, in the training, LSS training, I have offered the trainings uh, to the Six Sigma training to participants from Hyundai Motors. Then TV Germany, I have prepared the content for the yellow belt and the green belt content. And then the LNT walls, I have taken the green belt as well as the black belt for the 16 of their participants. In Tata Communication, I have taken more than five or six uh, different batches of Six Sigma green belt and black belt. Then Mahindra Finance on the lean and uh, lean IT, I have uh, specifically focusing on how lean can be implemented in the lean IT. Then Standard Chartered Bank and Pfizer Health Limited, etc. So you can see that again covering the different various uh, 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 verticals across the world, right? And uh, one of the uh, unique feature of uh, taking the training in uh, Ice Cubes is that we always we believe in a philosophy that we always give you a very simple and easy to understand presentation without compromising the complexity or quality of the content. So this is one of the unique features of Ice Cube. So I think the for the last 30 minutes, I think would have been hearing about that. So there were some very uh, difficult uh, concepts at that about the variability process approach and uh, using the statistical tools and all. But we are trying to give it uh, in a, as simple as uh, format as possible, uh, but without compromising on the quality, right? Because we firmly believe that uh, getting, uh, getting the certification is not alone going to help you in getting the uh, benefits of the total 60 methodology you should give, you should practice more. So the more and more you practice, the more and more you use the Six Sigma and the quality tools, then only you'll be able to get the benefits of Six Sigma methodology. So that we, like whether it is a black belt uh, uh, training material or green belt training material, we always start with the, what the definition of quality, right? Maybe a person, so we'll have to achieve that, maybe a person who has already put in a 20 years of uh, experience, he would, he would be like attending a black, black belt training, but again, I would again start with the definition of quality, but again, without hurting his ego, right? Because you feel that, okay, it is a different uh, way of approach, then you will also like it. So we just uh, prepare the uh, content in such a way that it is easily understood by different uh, spectrum of people. And then we also give uh, ample examples from manufacturing, service, software development, and real life, right? So whenever I just uh, uh, run a batch, I just really, okay, whenever I, they get introduced as themselves, then I just see like what vertical they are working for. So then um, what type of... Uh, uh, product they are making. And then whenever I give the examples, then I always try to relate it to their uh, area of work so that they'll be able to understand the concept uh, uh, correctly. And then you also see like how uh, I have also given you a real life example of how Six Sigma can help in solving a real life problem. Then we always go for interactive sessions with the presentations containing the relevant images and video. So you can see that most of my presentation or the concepts are presented in the image format and wherever required, we'll also give the videos. And then one of the very important and unique feature which you'll be learning, which you'll be seeing in the next two slides is that we also offer the project guidance at a very nominal uh, charges. So what we do is we have a, a mechanism by which we do the project guidance, uh, uh, assistance to our uh, people who are actually taking the training from us, either the green belt or black belt training. So after the completing the training, they then they can again take a project either from their personal life or from the professional life or from a, uh, the company uh, where they have worked in the, before or whatever it is, then they can take up a problem and then they can try to build a Six Sigma project around that. And then we will just uh, guide them and help them how they can uh, take it up as a, uh, present it as a black belt or a green belt project. And then what type of tools can be used, how to analyze and then uh, how to use the Six Sigma tool what improvement tools can be used and all. So that uh, typically we have developed a standard a template so that uh, all those information can be presented in the template. And during that one hour session, then uh, we will just, uh, people from the different uh, domains and different verticals will be presenting the project. And then once you are listening to that, then you get the exposure of like uh, listening how the Six Sigma methodology can be applied to the other domain also. So for example, if a participant from uh, a black belt trainee from a manufacturing sector, he is presenting a project, then there may be a participant from the service uh, domain. So he'll be able to clearly know how this uh, Six Sigma uh, methodology can be applied to manufacturing. So such type of cross-learning is possible due to those uh, project guidance uh, listing. 
and uh, this uh, session uh, weekly session is a free session but during that whenever you want to do a project on your own then that is done offline so we i give the guideline maybe i it will take around 4 to 5 uh, sessions of one hour each and then for that that will be charged on a very nominal basis so now what is going to be the differentiator between us and uh, ice cubes and others so you can see that in other uh, unit shoots there are three levels you can see yellow belt green belt and black belt so now maybe the yellow belt either some uh, in shoot they are offering free or at a low cost but green belt and black belt you find that uh, they always uh, give the training as a green belt training and the black belt training and then once the course is completed so you have only the theoretical knowledge then you go and uh, attend the interview and then the interviewer asking some questions then you are blinking right you don't have the answers for that because maybe they are teaching you some theory in 3 or 4 days in green belt and then 4 or 6 days in black belt without absolutely any exposure to your uh, projects right you don't have any application knowledge right and i have seen in many of the whenever i go through the uh, the profiles of uh, many of the people in the linkedin or uh, in because linkedin is where most of the professionals are there so when i just surf through the linkedin pages i find that they do the complete the green belt project in august and then in september they do the black belt project so they get two certificates and then they think that they will get a very fantastic good job in the company and then when they attend the interview or whenever they get an opportunity then they are unable to capitalize on the opportunity so this what will happen when you are going to take the training from others but if you take the training from ice cube then what we are doing is it is just like entering a family we consider that we have some whatsapp group and we have got some group we call that as a ice cubes lean six sigma family that means you are entering a lean six sigma family where already some senior members are there where already a lot of people are there from the different uh, verticals different domains different types of expertise those these people are here to help you and guide you so and they are going to listen to you and whenever you are presenting and whenever they find that something can be improved they are going to give that uh, that feedback to you so that you can improve on that so what we do is okay you just take the green belt training maybe then you can just work on it and then at whatever the point of time again till maybe 3 months or 4 months or 6 months or one year you can just uh, do the one one project or two project or whatever it is so you can just get more and more exposure to your uh, projects and then after that maybe you can take the training on black belt and then again you can just you can continue your journey on the project guidance right so you know why the people have uh, taken this uh, the given the terms like uh, green belt black belt and uh, this thing and all because you know these are the terms which are associated with uh, karate right so why these names are selected because can you be a good karate person if you don't practice on a day to day basis you can become a better karate person only if you practice on a day to day basis not because you just practice for uh, one month and then you just uh, 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 took part in some contest and then you are uh, awarded a green belt and then uh, after six months again you just uh, uh, went for some other contest then you won and then you just were uh, uh, certified as a black belt karate person and then for the next uh, two or three years uh, then you don't practice then you are that is uh, that uh, this thing is not going to be of any use to you right so we have uh, understood this particular problem and that's why we always give importance for project guidance so whenever you pass out from uh, ours then you find that you will have the technical knowledge as well as the practical uh, this uh, uh, concepts in the real life in the project so whenever you are uh, uh, going for an interview definitely you have got a very great chances of getting selected in that particular interview right so this is what is one of the unique features of ice cube and second important point what i want to highlight here is about the uh, fees whatever you are charging right so if you really uh, go through the uh, slide here you find that normally yellow belt is conducted as a two day course green belt as a three day course and then black belt is a four day course and we find that the this 25% increment in green belt is only maybe on selected areas like analyze space and improve space right so maybe you are going to learn again relearn the again exactly the 50% whatever you have learned in the yellow belt and then you are going to add only 25% during the green belt same way whenever from green belt to again black belt you are going again you are going to take only uh, you are going to add only 25% extra content right you are going to learn only 25% more but if you really see what is the charges you are going to pay to the uh, training institute so you are going to pay uh, for the same content say for example same 50% of the content you are going to learn in the yellow belt 
So you are going to pay whenever you are going to obtain the yellow bin, then same seventy fifty dollars you are going to pay again for whenever you are going to take the green belt training, and again, so you are going to pay three times, right? From going from yellow belt to green belt to black belt, right? So if seventy five twenty two hundred three fifty, so total. Uh, uh, so for example, if you see the others, so hundred dollars is the yellow belt, two fifty dollars is the green belt, and black belt is five hundred dollars. So total, you are paying eight hundred fifty dollars. That means for the same content, you are paying thrice, right? But if you come to ice uh, ice cube, what we do is, well, we are we are just putting the base, our base base charges are also less. So if you compare one to one with the yellow belt charges uh, uh, fees for our own uh, our uh, training and the other thing, the basic cost is uh, uh, less. And the other important factor is we just charge only the. They, like whenever you enter into ice cubes and you want to take the green belt, so for example, you pay two hundred dollars. Then whenever you want to take the green belt, you don't have to pay three hundred fifty dollars. You just pay three fifty minus two hundred. That is only one fifty dollars. That means only for the extra learning, extra content, whatever you are going to learn. So only for that you are going to pay for that. Okay. So this is again a unique feature from ice cube. So two ways I have told. So two major uh, unique features. By taking the training in uh, the with us, one is basic uh, uh, the charges are less, and second thing is you can just navigate from the one uh, one certification to the other certification just by paying only the incremental amount. And third thing is you can also take the advantages from our project data. So with this, I am just uh, completing this uh, course, and then uh, maybe if any questions are there, you can ask. But before that, I will just see whether if there are any questions, I need to answer from the whatever has been raised in the chat.